Hey everybody, thank you so much for bearing with me while I have been getting over first the flu and then the pneumonia that the flu decided to turn into. I am really grateful and I promise you that we are completely on track. It helped that we needed an extra week after AWP because it means that we're not behind on anything. I will though be much better from now on about checking the message boards every day. And again, I apologize for that and I, I hope that you feel like you're getting your money's worth um, with the addition of the, the extra essay that I will read for you in the next six months. I just had a couple of days where it wasn't something that I could do. And I know that led to some extra confusion about posting. And you have my, my apologies. I was sound asleep for <laughs> about 48 hours. All right, so let's get on now to talking about what's gonna happen next. The first thing that will happen next is that you will get your feedback from me on on the essays that you did, either the Anaphora or the Alphabetarian essay, probably by, by no later than tomorrow evening. I wanna make sure that I've read everybody else's feedback before I get back to you. I wanna tell you about my own experience with workshop feedback, which is that I, I believe in being hugely open to it. I pay attention to everything everybody says. And sometimes that means I pay attention to advice that maybe somebody who was a little less open to workshop advice would recognize was not great advice. And I'm much better at parsing other people's work and the advice that it gets than I am at parsing my own. So part of what I will do when I give you feedback is I will also say, you know, I know that that person X suggested that you needed to do this particular thing or that this other thing wasn't working. And I, I wanna say, I just don't think that's a, a good reading of what you've written. I would suggest this other thing instead because I wanna make sure that you're getting feedback that's really useful to you. And sometimes we all you know, read things from, from a place that's maybe informed by something other than what's on the page. And so part of my job in giving you feedback will also be to help you parse all of the other feedback that you got. Um, and sometimes, unfortunately, that means going, I know everybody said this thing is great, but here's why I think maybe it needs a little bit more work in this place. Uh, so, so some of it will be helping to parse changes that are suggested that I don't think you need to make, but others might be saying, I know everybody loved Thing X, but, but I think Thing X is a little bit problematic. I am always happy uh, to go back and forth with you in email about any of the comments that I make. And again, you should have it, but my email address is sarah, S-A-R-A-H, emc2 at gmail.com. And if there's anything about my comments that are confusing to you, please don't hesitate to just email me right away. Don't email me though through the course sites um, email link because sometimes those go to a weird place in my email folder and, and take me a while to find. So email me directly at my Gmail address. All right, so now let's talk about the Hermit Crab essay. Last week, we were stealing from the poets. Alphabetarian and anaphora are both things that, that we're taking directly from the poets. This week, weirdly enough, we're gonna steal from the accountants, right? So the Hermit Crab is an essay which borrows its form from something else. And the very first Hermit Crab essay I ever read borrowed its form from an IRS form. Um, it was a tax return and the essay was about losing a house in Katrina and about the way in which the narrative was built around the damages and things that were being claimed. It was just the expense report. And, and I've never itemized, so I don't know how carefully <laughs> the essay stuck to the form, but I, I found it really compelling and particularly the way in which it sort of formalized the sense of loss in the essay. That essay isn't available um, because it, it wasn't published as something I saw in a workshop. But I think that we have a lot of good examples to look at. I wanna talk for a minute particularly about Jill Talbot's The Professor of Longing, which we'll be reading. And one of the things about that essay that I find so compelling is that because it's in the form of a syllabus, Talbot's able to get away with doing something that I, I don't think very many other forms would allow, which is that the entire essay is pretty much dependent on our ability to recognize most, if not all, of the literary illusions that she's making. There are a few places where the essay even ties back to her earlier body of work. Uh, for instance, when she decides not to read on the road. 
Um, you wouldn't know this unless you had read her earlier work, but The Man Who Left Her, um, The Father of Her Child, that was a book that they had shared. And so in some ways it's about putting him to the side. And these sorts of things are things that would be really hard to get away with in a narrative essay unless you explained them. But in The Professor of Longing, again, because we understand that a syllabus gives us an outline of something, right? That what we expect to get out of a syllabus is a sense of something rather than knowledge of something. There can be these ties and it's okay if we miss one or two literary illusions. I'll say that when I've taught this to undergraduates and they miss a lot of the literary illusions, sometimes it doesn't work for them. But if we miss one or two, we're still okay. It's an essay that's much more about giving us the idea of something than it is about giving us the details of something. And we saw that also particularly in Index for R, but here it's functioning in a different way. And I want you to think about what's different because we have a lot of information here. And part of what we're doing is connecting the different sections and also personalizing them to the story because much of what we have in this essay is cultural knowledge instead of knowledge from the author's lived life. I also want to talk for a minute about Randon Noble's The Heart is a Torn Muscle. This is another essay that I really admire. And here, I think we do have all personal information, all personal detail in the form of a medical report. And I really, for me, this part of the, the beauty of this essay is that it creates a sense of the embodied broken heart. That because it's using a form that already makes us you know, at least me, um, a little inclined to read it as an embodied report, right? As something physical. Uh, and so that when she's talking about the heart as a torn muscle, I get that sense, right? Of the way in which this inappropriate crush feels in our body, the way in which this can hurt, right? I, I don't think anybody has ever been in a relationship uh, that that lasts years and years who hasn't had this experience of the the wild but very temporary crush that just comes out of nowhere. And because this essay makes it something that rests in our bodies rather than something that we have done or something that we have thought or some transgression on our part, it allows us to take a look at it without the same judgment that we might have if this were in a different form. And that's another thing I think the hermit crab can do. It puts us into the space where we would normally encounter the form that the essay has borrowed. Uh, and that makes us read it differently. I am a big fan of reading other people's hermit crab essays. I am not very successful at writing them because I hate forms and I tend to get really angry at forms. So I wanna throw something out there and I, I don't have an example of this for you to read because I couldn't find one. And I have been working on one off and on for a year and I'm gonna to try to finish it for this workshop just to be working along with you. Um, I'm a very big fan of the idea of the interactive essay. And I'll be honest, the reason I haven't finished mine is that the technology is sometimes tricky. I, I wanna do a BuzzFeed style quiz called Rich Voice of Aging, Are You? Uh, and it looks at my very own personal experience with having to deal with my own internalized ageism as I enter my 50s. Uh, but I also have another one I'm Googling around with and just messing with that I'm doing in Twine as an interactive essay. And it is the story of a breakup and I'm doing my best to tell it from both my perspective and the perspective of my ex. I chose a really simple breakup where there's a really clear difference in the way the narrative goes, because of course it's really hard to say what somebody else thinks, but essentially you make choices about whether or not to believe me or to believe him. And as you follow the essay through and make these choices, it changes what story you get. That kind of really simple choice-based sort of choose your own adventure is something you can experiment with. If you're interested in playing with this, go to twinery.org. The tool that you wanna use is called Twine and you can do it all online and it will let you build an interactive essay. And this, is, this hermit crab form is the form of the game, right? So you might wanna play around with some of the other Twine games that are out there. For those of you who heard about Gamergate at some point, 
the game that launched Gamergate, Depression Quest, was built in Twine. So people do really interesting, robust things with it. And I would argue that Depression Quest, you know what, and I've just decided I'm going to stick Depression Quest in the folder because I would argue that Depression Quest is an essay. So I lied. You're going to have one to read. I wasn't going to put it in there, but as I'm talking about it and thinking about how cool and interesting it is to think about the interactive essay, I'm going to add it in there. And I'm going to take another one out because it's actually kind of a long playing experience. So you guys will have... The Heart is a Torn Muscle, The Professor of Longing, and Depression Quest. And I want you to do Depression Quest a couple of times so that you can see the way in which the interactivity changes the experience um, and the fact that the essay can come out in different ways. It's a second-person essay in this case. Uh, so that's a thing to think about. I would say that for me, because you're already adding the hermit crab element of, of the game, that I would consider doing it as a first person essay, um, because I think that at some point we might blur the line. It's the same reason that you can't really write a hermit crab essay in the form of a sonnet, because you just have a sonnet, right, at the end. It's, it's nothing about it that makes it an essay. You can't write a hermit crab essay in the form of a song, because you just have a song at the end. Um, and I, I've gone around about that a lot, because I think one of my favorite essay is slash songwriters uh, is Kimya Dawson. And if you don't know her work, I encourage you to listen to a song or two unless you really, really hate lo-fi um, folk music, because it's definitely lo-fi folk music. But she's, she's doing that, essentially. Her songs are kind of personal lyric essays, but they're still songs. And so the place that you don't want to cross the line in the Hermit Crab essay is the place where what you end up with is so much like the thing that you started with, that what you have is not necessarily an essay. And for that reason, it's really good to look at things that you just would never expect. I have had students write really amazing hermit crab essays that are menus, um, also a recipe index. I had a student do this amazing essay about poverty in Appalachia where she went and got her grandmother's handwritten notebook full of recipes. And she would write a section about the sort of the difficult times her family went through and the coal mines shut down. And then she would put in a recipe for something like squirrel gravy or creasy greens or things that were foraged that her grandmother had written recipes for. This is an amazing piece. I, I don't know why she hasn't published it. I think I will email her as soon as I'm done here and say, no, this really needs to go out in the world. This is really pretty amazing. I also want to encourage you to pick your topic first and then to move from topic to form. I tend to fall in love with form. That's why I'm teaching this particular essay. And I have wasted a lot of time going, I would love to write an essay in the form of thing X or thing Y. Um, I have a discarded hermit crab essay in the form of a, a dog adoption form. I have a discarded hermit crab essay in the form of a Weight Watchers journal. I have a discarded hermit crab as excuse me hermit crab essay in the form of a series of love letters, which might just be epistolary. We can argue whether epistolary um, essays are hermit crab essays, but I think we can stretch the definition that far. I don't have any hermit crab essays that I have finished to my own satisfaction. And in looking at why while preparing this class, I know it's because I go, oh, that form would be amazing. Um, and then you're just stuck with form, right? All, you, all that's interested you about that is the form itself and not the topic. So I'm going to encourage you to start out by making a list of five things you would really like to write about that you don't want to write narrative about, right? So anything where you're like, I don't have complete information, or I'm really just going for here is an impression of this, or I would like to look at this from the side because narrative's not going to get at the truth that I want to get at. Just make that list of five things and then go through and say, so what forms could I use for this? Would this make a good playlist essay where you list the songs that you might be listening to and then a paragraph under each one for that? So playlist for a rainy Sunday in Tennessee when I'm recovering from pneumonia, right? And then all of the songs 
that have some some reference in the same way that the books do in Jill Talbot's The Professor of Longing, but the paragraphs, but as, as paragraphs instead of as syllabi sections. Um, I also encourage you not to try to do something that's too mimetic. So I have seen people try to do hermit crab essays about violent crimes using the police report form. And the form is designed in some ways to streamline and restrict the information, and it can be really hard to adequately subvert it to make the essay interesting in either a formal or a narrative sense. Um, I also have seen people do, do forms where really it's not a form, right? It's a, it's a big blank page with a place for things like name and social security number at the top. Also, don't ever put your your real social security number in, in an essay that you intend to publish. But it really isn't a hermit crab essay because the form doesn't inform the way that the text is constructed. So you want something with enough structure to it that it changes the way that you're writing. I'm really interested to hear your ideas. I'm also going to put a place on the bulletin board where you can upload interesting forms that we may not have encountered. One that I, I wish that I knew enough about astrology to do is that somebody uh, recently showed me my birth chart, which I had never seen. And I was like, oh my gosh, this would make a really great hermit crab essay if I just knew how to work with it. And if I had an idea for what sort of content to put into it, because it's beautiful. And so the last thing I, I want to encourage you to think about is that the Hermit Crab essay has an element of design. It doesn't have to. You don't have to be really focused on the prettiness, but you can be. And you can choose pretty forms. And you can choose forms that have a visual impact as well. Um, I've seen them as PowerPoint presentations, which I think doesn't work if you just do the slides. But if you do the printout of the slides and the speaker's notes, and it's the speaker's notes where sort of the real depth comes in. I have seen that work. And then you have all of this range for how you design the slides. I have seen it done as a paper doll book. And that one was really beautiful and interesting. And, and obviously the person who did it had a lot of artistic talent. But there really are no limits except it can't be another form of creative writing. Again, because of the sonnet, song lyric sort of problem where that's what you end up with. And you probably want to avoid anything that's just too devoid of information. So a shopping list where really you just write down a bunch of ingredients, unless it's a pretty comprehensive thing and the title's giving us some clue, like shopping list for making the soup my father loves on the day they've told us he's probably going to die or something like that, um, where what, what the ingredients are would have extra significance or weight. Probably probably there's just not enough material there to get at what you're trying to get and the form is a little too skimpy. So you want to make sure that you match the form with the content too. I'm really excited about this. Go forth, find a form, and let's see what you come up with. Thanks and I will see you guys next week.